Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this Microsoft 365 certified Security Administrator Associate certification course. In this episode, we are going to learn how to create a DLP policy. After this lesson, you would be able to describe the different built-in templates for DLP policies, explain how to choose the correct location for a DLP policies, and configure the correct rules for protecting content and enable and review the DLP policy correctly. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So let me first show you how can you choose a built-in policy template. First, for that, I am taking you to the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. You can go to Admin Center by going into admin.microsoft.com. On the left-hand side, under Admin Center, click on Security. This takes you to the Security and Compliance Admin Center. You can go directly by going into protection.office.com. On the left-hand side, you would be able to find data loss prevention and expand that and click on Policy. This is where you would be able to see all the policies you have implemented and what are the policy matches and the false positives which we, which we learned in the previous video. You can create a brand new policy by clicking on Create a New Policy. And this is where you would be able to choose a template. This is what I was talking about. You can go based on region or country or you can choose different vertical for creating a new template as well. It is very important for us to understand how to choose location to protect. This is where we can identify things like you can choose all location in Office 365 which include Exchange, Email and SharePoint documents or you can choose specific location that shall be protected by your policy. The default option or the first option is selected by default and it is called org wide policy. So let me show you where you can find this. I'm going to select a default policy and click next. I'm going to keep the same name as it is. Click next. This is where you would be able to choose. The first is it protect everything by default. So I'm going to click on let me choose the specific location and click next. This gives me an ability to pick and choose where I would like to apply or not like to enable this policy. The next thing we need to understand is policy settings tab. This displays the template for default DLP rules and you can accept the default settings for condition and action or select use advanced settings to create custom rules as well. So let me take you there and show you what are the custom rules available. So I'm going to click next and under policy settings, you can select the default one or you can select advanced and click next. This gives you an ability to go and edit and customize additional settings based on your requirement. As you can see that there are heaps of options, but that's where I want you to perform these lab activities to get familiarized with these options. And the next step is to enable the policy. When you create your DLP policy, you should consider rolling them out gradually to assess their impact and test their effectiveness before fully enforcing them. For example, you don't want a new DLP policy to unintentionally block access to thousands of documents that people need to access to get their work done. So let me show you what are the different sequences of activation options which is available. So I'm going to click next and under the review settings or policy settings, you have options like you can turn this policy right away or you can test this which again shows the policy tips in the test mode. Or you can keep it turned off and you can decide to turn on later. When you have created and applied a DLP policy and there is an action taken in Microsoft Teams which conflicts with that policy, the user will get this policy tip. This is an example diagram of how it looks like. In this case, the user tried to send the social security number in the Microsoft Teams channel and the message was blocked and there is a help link which says what can I do. This link will open a dialog box which provides options for the center to resolve the issue. Alright, so that concludes the lesson on how to create these DLP policies. In the next video, we're going to learn how to customize a DLP policy. So I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.